Welcome back to our Yahoo Finance live coverage in Davos of the World Economic Forum. And one of the debates here and really everywhere is whether the U.S. and the global economy is going to enter a recession or not. How much is it going to slow down? Let's talk to someone about that. That is Gary Cohn. He is the vice chair at IBM and, of course, former head of the Council of Economic uh, Advisors for the for the Trump administration. Um, and so, Gary, wh what are you seeing? What are you hearing I mean, you, you wear a lot of hats, as always. You talk to a lot of people, as always. What's the vibe? Well, you know the vibe here, because everyone's fairly on the bearish side. Everyone's talking about global recessions. Everyone's talking about recessions. But of course, when I talk to people and ask them about their business, they seem to think their business is OK. So everyone here seems to think the other person has a problem. You know, my personal view on this is, you know, I, I think we've weathered the storm in the United States. Um, it feels like we're, we're, we're coming out in a fairly decent place. I do think the Fed will probably raise another couple 25 basis points. They're not quite done yet. I don't think they want to walk away. I think they want to put sort of the nail in the coffin on inflation. But all the data shows that inflation's coming down relatively quickly. And we still see pretty positive economic data. You know, we still see employment growth. We still see GDP in a, in a relatively good position. So I'm still cautiously optimistic going into next year. And, and so I'm, I'm clearly in the more bullish camp for those here in Davos. Were you surprised, Gary, by some of your former peers in the banking industry calling out last week and then also today as well, a mild recession. I, I, I'm not surprised. You know, it's, it's, if you're running a big bank and you're running a big business, I think you have to think about that as a possibility. You know, you have to run your business being prepared for the worst. And if we don't go to a mild recession and we don't have that, it's surely a lot easier to run your business having prepared for that than not having prepared for that. So I understand the mentality. Would this be a Federal Reserve driven recession? I, I'm not going to say it's a Federal Reserve driven recession. You know, we, we clearly had inflation. We clearly had a major supply chain disruption coming out of COVID. You know, we could go through the history. You know, during COVID, we became a purely goods economy. The only thing that was driving the economy were things that the United States Postal Service, UPS, or FedEx could de deliver to your house. And so we had this massive demand on goods. And so the supply chain broke down. As we reopened the economy, you know, no one had labor. And we changed from our natural um, goods economy to our, our natural supply side economy, excuse me, where we really consume um, we really consume services. So we're an 80% services economy in the United States, but when we went out to start consuming our natural services, no one had workers. So everyone scrambled to get labor back, and it was tough to get labor back in the economy. So we saw quite a bit of wage inflation, and we're still seeing the wage inflation as people are out still trying to enjoy themselves and make up for the lost time that they lost during COVID. You still see you know, the airlines, you still see the hotels, the restaurants are still thriving and trying to hire people back. And as we revert back to our more service-driven economy. So I guess then the question is, if it makes sense CEOs are pessimistic because they have to manage their businesses, they have to have an eye on worst case scenarios. What about the markets though? Because there too, you could argue, especially the bond market is looking for maybe even cuts by the end of the year, which would imply that the economy is gonna be doing worse and going to need those cuts. Do they have it wrong? So I, I don't know where rates are today. It's when you're in Davos, you get out of I know. Out of, you we're talking about it's how isolated you are. You're in a total yeah. bubble. Well, I think, well, I guess the <laughs> markets are open. <laughs> so they're, yeah. they're open, total bubble. But you know, the, the, the 10 year in the U.S. is trading, you know, 360-ish. I'll give you an ish. Normally, I would know exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and we've got a, a front end, you know, Fed fund rate at uh, four and a half, probably going to four and three quarters, 5%. So the Treasury market is discounting what's ultimately going to happen in the economy. And the market is, is, is sort of voicing its opinion, I think, relatively strongly. I think the market's right. You know, at the end of the day, as I always say to people, you know, you can trade the market. You know, billions and trillions of dollars are wagered in the Treasury market every day. And people are expressing their views, and you can express your view, and you'll be right or wrong uh, based on your opinion. The Treasury, you know, has, uh, uh, sorry, the Fed. By the has, way, I got, I got a little tip in my ear. It's 3.5% today. Three and, OK, so, <laughs> so by the way, lower. so yeah. we're, down, we're down from where we were last week. So think about that. So rates yeah. are even lower than they were last week. So you know, the, 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 the Fed, on the other hand, you know, they can talk. They can raise Fed funds. They can raise the overnight rate. 
They can control what people get on overnight funding, but that's the only part of the mm. curve they can control. Yes, they can use extraordinary measures and they can do twists, then they can do QE and they can do QT, but ultimately their real, their real opportunity is to control the front end of the curve. And, and I think the curve speaking for itself right now to what people are saying about the U.S. economy. We have this uh, term, I'm sure you know this, that a, a stock is dead money if a company is not executing. As someone that it, has invested in blockchain and, and even crypto, is Bitcoin dead money here? Do you even touch that? Do you go near it at all? So I have not invested. Not invested in crypto. Not invested in crypto. But I blockchain. want to make that very true. But you're a blockchain I've, I've invested blockchain in guy. blockchain. I think blockchain as a tool is a very interesting tool. It's a tool that will modernize mm -hmm. the financial services industry. You know, I lived through sort of the, the revolution of clearing and how we put everything through the, the one of the, the the solutions to the financial crisis was to clear everything. So we went from clearing the most liquid items in the world to clearing everything. I think blockchain is a further evolution on the clearinghouse and it's the, being able to real time clear things and, and move title instantaneously and move cash instantaneously. So I'm, I'm bullish on blockchain, on crypto. I, I really don't have a view on crypto. So do we sort of need to, like reputationally, do we need to divorce blockchain from crypto? 100%. Because it's a technology, right? And it, it can is be a used in so many other things. I mean, look so, at me, I just lumped it right in together. Yeah, so, no, no. But, but so how do you do that as an investor in it, as someone who wants it to go further? How do you get it to people to sort of so, separate so the two? Blockchain, block, think of blockchain as the clearinghouse. We don't talk about the clearinghouse. You, can't, you don't even know who clears the house, who the clearing right. house, and you don't even know about DTCC. You don't know where the securities are right. settled. We don't, we don't talk about the settlement You don't need agency. to. Most people it, don't need right. to. You don't need to. You talk about the individual securities. Um, Bitcoin is the security. It is actually a security. And there's many other securities. People have created other cryptocurrencies. You can talk about them. But the, the blockchain is actually the underlying infrastructure that allows these securities to be, be transacted and to be settled in real time. Gary, you came in an interesting time for IBM. A lot of transformation uh, at the company. New CEO, Arvind yeah. uh, Krishna. Investors still seem doubtful on, on a turnaround. Uh, where is IBM on that turnaround plan? Look, I think Arvin has laid out a, a very uh, distinct plan on revenue growth, on free cash flow growth, and he continues to execute upon his plan. And kind of what are you doing there, <laughs> for lack of a better question? You know, like, what, what do you see as your role there, and, and how do you help with the strategy that he has laid out? Look, I, I came in a couple of years ago when Arvin came in as the new chairman and CEO. Um, he asked me to come in and, and help him think about his strategy, think about his senior management team, think about what IBM of the future should look like, help them with clients, help them with client relationships. And it's been a really interesting experience to learn about the technology world and the evolution. IBM is still on the forefront of cutting edge technology, which is extraordinary. It's, it's a whole new world for me to learn. And it's been a really interesting and fascinating couple of years. Great, Gary Cohn, thank you so much for being here. Vice Chair at IBM, the aforementioned. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks a lot, appreciate it. And uh, we will be back with more, of course, but for right now, keep it tuned right here on Yahoo Finance.